All right, it is time now to take another look at a piece of Nebraska history. Today, that includes a woman whose name might seem familiar, especially for anyone who's attended the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Joining us now with more on this is Chris Goforth with History Nebraska. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. Before we get into that, we have to mention that you used to work for KFOR Radio here in town, and yeah. KFOR is celebrating 100 years today. Yeah, happy birthday to KFOR. It was in March 4th. 1924 that they launched as a station in Nebraska. They started up in David City for those that didn't know and I think it was 1927 they moved to Nebraska and yeah, it's it's a pleasure and an honor to be just a small part of that storied history. Uh, it's a station that has served the Lincoln community for a very long time and we uh, we certainly hope there's another hundred years left in them. All right, I listen to them every day as I'm driving into work. <laughs> yep, so do I, yeah. Get the latest news there. All right, well, Chris, transitioning now, March is Women's History Month, so what do you have for us today? Yeah, so many Nebraskans have probably heard the name Louise Pound, but few probably understand her important role in Nebraska history. So a little background, Louise Pound was born in Lincoln in 1872. She grew up homeschooled and was highly intelligent. She was able to read by the age of three, and by the age of 19, she had earned her diploma in music and her master's just three years later. In the academia circles, she was well known as an American folklorist and one of the pioneers in linguistic studies of American English. She was a full professor at the University of Nebraska here in Lincoln from 1912 to 1945. She even taught at Yale, Stanford, Columbia, and the University of Chicago. In 1955, she was the first woman to be elected president of the Modern Language Association. But she was also a force in athletics. Louise Pound was considered to be one of the premier tennis players of her time. She was Nebraska women's state singles champion in 1891 and 92, the only years that she entered. And at the University of Nebraska, she competed on the men's team since there was no women's tennis team. She was the men's champion singles in, and doubles in 1891. She was also a second place winner in men's intercollegiate singles. In 1894, she won an intercollegiate championship in mixed doubles. She was also the only woman member of the Lincoln Tennis Club during the 1890s and was considered unbeatable in singles. In 1897, she won the Women's Western Tournament singles crown, defeating both the national champion and the Canadian singles title holder. But she also excelled at golf and was a ranked ranking player in Lincoln for nearly 30 years. Louise Pound was also an avid bicyclist, an ice skater, a roller skater, a skier, and, one, and was also one of the first Nebraska women basketball team players in 1897. In 1955, that same year that she was named president of the Modern Language Association, she also became the very first woman inducted into the Nebraska Sports Hall of Fame. So a very story career both in academia and in athletics. Wow, I did not know all of that about her. And all I knew that there was a residence hall <laughs> right. named after <laughs> Louise Pound. That's about all I knew, really. So that was really good, good information. Yeah, and it was, she's one of those people in Nebraska history, especially in women history, that people know her name, but they don't really understand why. I mean, with, with Willa Cather, Mari Sandoz, those are names that people understand, and we, we understand why we know them and why they're famous and why they're important to Nebraska history, but Louise Pound was just kind of one of those anomalies where, yeah, I know the name, but I don't really know much about her, so mm -hmm. this is a great opportunity to share a lot of what she contributed, not just in terms of her prowess in the classroom, but her prowess on the court. Okay, all right. Good stuff. Thanks for telling us that today, Thank you Chris. so much.